Wayne McCurry from FNB Wealth and Investments joins us for a closer look at what's playing itself out on the market scene. Thank you so much for your time, Wayne. Quite a lot that we are digesting uh, here locally and also globally. But let's start off with that global picture, which uh, I guess really influences the markets much more than what happens domestically. We are awaiting uh, key inflation prints out of the US and the UK. Uh, what are you gauging in terms of the market's mood ahead of those inflation prints? Well, I suppose the market's just sitting and waiting. I mean, it's certainly not taking a negative view on the inflation numbers. When you look at all the data that we've seen so far, it actually indicates that the U.S. economy is slowing down and that the Fed's starting to worry about the growth rate. And they're also making very positive noises that inflation is going the route that they want it to go. But tomorrow's number is truly critically import important. If it doesn't disappoint. In other words, <clears throat> if it comes out where expected or maybe even lower, then interest rate cuts are on maybe even half a percent in in September. That's extremely good news for exporting countries like South Africa, for our RAND, mm. uh, for our commodity shares, etc. So this is once again, as it always is, I suppose, a critical number for uh, for us in our markets. Well, actually, you're just talking about those uh, commodities, uh, Wayne, uh, because, of course, you talk about the worries of uh, slowing growth in the U.S. And, of course, uh, just um, about a week ago, we were talking about recession fears that have been circling. Does that not then make you nervous about, for example, commodities like PGMs that we have seen under pressure today, um, that it maybe might take a while for those to start seeing a significant uptick uh, in that cycle? Yeah. Look, we all know the demand for commodities has been poor, and we've seen the prices, you know, for platinum and palladium go well below a thousand dollars. So the bad news is already in the price. Mm -hmm. And even if the U.S. economy disappoints, and I, I don't think there's going to be a recession, but there could well be one. I, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. All of that surprising enough bodes well for our mining shares, because that means interest rate. If it is, if if the U.S. is in a recession. That mm. means interest rate cuts are coming thick and fast. And, of course, the market looks ahead. It says, what's going to happen in two years' time with lower interest rates? Ah, might be better growth, therefore might be better commodity prices, and the shares will anticipate that and actually go up, even if there is poor economic data. So the market mm. obviously looks at today's events, but more so looks at future events. It's what's going to happen into the future, given the direction of interest rates. It's also really quite interesting to see the divergence within that commodity space. So Wayne, looking at gold and the other commodities, for example, today we did have DRD Gold uh, being the biggest gainer on the JSC so far. What's given DRD Gold so much a shine today, uh, if there is anything specific? But also really looking at the commodity space, would you be classifying it as gold and then the other ones on the other side? Yes, there is definitely a differentiation between the gold shares and the other commodities, and we can obviously clearly see it in the performance over the last while. Between yeah. you can take you can take gold shares and platinum shares. There's quite a marked difference between the two. Yeah. But why DRD Gold is up or not, I don't know. This is a yeah. it's only up two percent, so that's not huge. Uh. Um, there's no particular reason for it going up uh. that that I could ascertain. Ah. I mean, it's, it's actually other than other than maybe Cecil, yes. you know, the movements are all like one percent yet up and down. You know, there's not there's not that much happening. The market's quite quiet at the moment, actually. Mm. And with Cecil, I mean, can we expect this kind of heavy volatility where one day we see big moves to the upside and big moves to the downside? I suppose so. Yes. I mean, Cecil, when you look at its share price going back a while now, I mean, it went through 400 rand in the middle of 2022 and you know the next stop now is 120 rand you call it call it that and it's been sitting you know at more or less this 120 130 rand level now for probably or oh, six months eight months or so yeah. so it's waiting for direction it's waiting for direction on interest rates more importantly it's waiting for direction on global chemical prices mm. i mean you saw their results that came out yesterday 
when they've written off countless billions on the U.S. investment and some in South Africa. Mm. But And it's not the first time they've written off against their U.S. investment. So that has been a total and utter catastrophe that mm. virtually almost bankrupted the company. But if chemical prices turn up, then mm. they've got a very, very low asset base that they can show extremely good returns on. Okay. And, of course, if chemical prices are sustained at higher levels, they'll just write those assets up again. I mean, these are – it's the way it goes for a, for a commodity company. You know, you, you're you in the worst of days now, and hopefully there will be better days going forward. Ah. Well, Wayne, another interesting uh, share that I'll be looking at, and uh, particularly one that has been uh, – people have been talking a lot about it uh, since yesterday on Twitter – is Cash Build, uh, particularly after the sales update that Ital Tal released uh, yesterday. Of course, we did, we did have uh, – currently have an uptick in the share price of uh, Cash Build uh, after it did get a yes. beating yesterday, and really quite a beating over the last month. Uh, what are you making of what's going on yeah. here with that share? Well, look, with all of these, with all of these companies involved with the DIY building, building segment, I mean, they had a lovely time just after COVID. I mean, yeah. you know, the people were fixing everything at home because they were sick of being moaned at for the squeaky door and the flaky paint. <laughs> but they've all had a tough time since then. Mm. Whether it's build it, it's part of spa, or whether it's, uh, uh, well, they delisted now, but uh, yes. builders warehouse, part of MassMart. You know, they've had a torrid time. No one's spending any money, high interest rate, economic conditions, etc. Now, mm. on cash bill, you know, it's a relatively small company. So you do get, you know, sort of almost random price movements okay. up or down without any news supporting mm. it. But it's also been sitting around the, you know, 140, 150 level now for a while. And it, along with all the other building and supply companies, are waiting, hopefully, for a better future, lower interest rates, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, going forward, which should, which should see some sort of improvement in their, in their fortunes. Mm. And, of course, and I mean, we have spoken about it a few times, and it's been around in the news a little bit, but this two-tier, two-pot retirement oh, yes. system. Yeah. You know, over the next six months, eight months, I don't think it will happen before the end of the year, but who knows, it's coming in the next six months to eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, people are going to withdraw a lot of money from their, from their savings pot. Yeah. They're going to, in fact, deplete that savings pot. And a lot will be just be spent on pure consumption expenditure, clothing, mm, food, et cetera. Okay. But, a, but a, a bit might also be spent on DIY and home improvements. Uh, so hopefully that does boost them. It's a one-off story, obviously, mm -hmm. but hopefully that does help cash build and other companies like that. All right. Uh, Wayne, just checking if we should be going uh, to the clips to... Ref okay, yes, uh, let's do that. Let's reflect on some of the counters that have found favor with uh, some of your industry peers. We were talking earlier about the um, drop in the market over August, and I, and I mentioned that companies come back to viable levels. One of those, I think, is Google, um, with volatility set to continue in August, September, and possibly a little bit of October. The price can drop further. I mean, on just on my chance, about 15% down possibility. But it's back to about a 2023 price earnings historically. I don't think the uh, noise around the um, EU declaring it a monopoly is going to have that much of an effect. It might, in fact, sharpen um, Google, if I can call it Google's focus. Yeah, we like ACI here. So it's uh, a very uh, long-term, long-invested uh, chemicals group, and they do mining explosives as well. I think what is important that we're seeing a new management team uh, and uh, they've taken quite a strong, hard, strategic look at the business and looking to remodel the business to focus it uh, on the on the mining side uh, of the business, uh, on the explosives and chemicals, and actually divest of a number of smaller businesses. So expect it to be a more focused, streamlined um, business that uh, will benefit from the mining cycle.
I think all the bad things, you know, are behind their back. You know, we know it's all because of low chemical prices. We expect that to improve going forward because when the uh, uh, economies continue to cut interest rates, that should help economies to grow. We know that had that impairment, and the biggest one was coming from that U.S. chemicals. I think it's a once-off. We don't mm -hmm. expect that to continue to happen. But now, if you look into their core headline in expression, they only dropped by 27 percent. The guys managed to improve their refining margins. The guys also managed to increase their sales. And if they continue to in that in this kind of environment, imagine if the economic condition gets to improve. All right, Wayne, so we've already spoken about uh, Cecil, particularly after what they released uh, yesterday. You're talking about uh, how uh, the fortunes uh, could, uh, you know, uh, turn around if we do have sustained uh, chemical prices at higher levels. Let's take a look at AECI because uh, the last uh, results that they released, uh, they looked uh, quite bad. But I don't know if they actually looked quite yes. bad or not, considering that they had a record uh, period in the last uh, reporting period. Correct. They got a bit of, they obviously got base effects involved there. Mm -hmm. But when you look at their financials and read their financials, I don't know how many times they talk new company transition, resh yeah. reshaping, refocusing, uh, new executive membership, restructuring, leadership compact, sale of businesses. Yeah. So they obviously are going through or have gone through a huge company reshuffle, the strategic reshuffle. Mm. Uh, they say it's progressing well, there's full focus. So hopefully something does come out of this. You know, they've sold a few companies. They've got, they, they've got out of a, mm. a couple of the business units they didn't want to be in. You yeah. know, when you look at the share price, it actually hasn't done that bad in, in the last while. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's sitting sort of I suppose halfway in its five-year trading range mm. and when you look at the company it's not terribly expensive but i'm not sure i would have this as my stock pick it's not a bad company mm -hmm. they're going through the transition mm. but i'm just not sure i think they're better ones to choose than than this particular one but i'm not negative on the company yeah i just think they're better ones ah all right well uh, let's maybe skip alphabet because i think we've been talking about uh, the u.s tech sector for a while Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. go to your stock pick for today <laughs> look i mean surprisingly enough even though we've spoken about it a few times now i'm also going for Cecil. okay okay because of exactly the reasons we've discussed yes. i mean the share price has taken a Pounding, um, we're sitting down at levels we haven't seen for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And all you literally need is a little bit of good news to come through on ah. the global economy, on world chemical prices. Yeah. And you can see quite significant upside on Cecil. Mm. I mean, we've got a valuation internally for what it's worth at probably 220, 230 Rand. Okay. Because to us, that fair value. However, if circumstances turn positive for Cecil, it, it can go above that price. So, but even at you know even at fair value, without being too optimistic in our view, you know, 120 rand is a long way from 220 rand. Of course. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your yeah. insights on what is currently moving investors' money today, Wayne. Uh, that was your midday market update with Wayne McCurry from FNB Wealth and Investments.